I want to give a huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Therapy isn't something to run away from, it's a vessel to run towards. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online, so break out your comfies. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time. Any time. And schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. No more fumbling to get a session on the calendar. You schedule based on when the time is right for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. Therapy changed my life for the better. Pun intended. And with BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash rocky. That's better h e l p dot com slash rocky. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rocky Powell, and this is Wild Nights Update. Local podcast host Rocky Powell attended SNL head writer Michael Che's 40th birthday last week, and in honor of such an epic event, we'll be doing a weekend update style opening. Ask Powell, will there be a laugh track? Oh, yeah, there'll be a laugh track. Last Tuesday, a raccoon was euthanized in Auburn, Maine, after a woman took it to Petco for a routine nail trimming. Says the woman, what? It's where I get my manicures. (laughs) Once inside, the raccoon was handled and kissed by people in the store. Presumably against its will. The raccoon tested negative for rabies, but I've been to Auburn, Maine and would recommend the raccoon get a full pap smear. Sadly, the raccoon was euthanized after the incident, but the annual Petco barbecue went off without a hitch. (laughs) Speaking of rabies, a cat in Laurelville, Florida has been terrorizing local residents in a small string of violent attacks. As if there isn't enough happening on the peninsula of chaos, the gruesome kitty has sent two people into the emergency room after two separate attacks. While Floridians are hoping to catch the pesky puss, the rest of the country is chanting four more years, four more years. (laughs) A 38-year-old spooked Florida man by the name of Andrew George claimed he saw a ghost in his Daytona Beach motel while staying there with his companion, Natasha Cachuro. The couple said a shadow had been following them and then fled towards Beach Street. The couple tried to break into a local business while residents surrounding called 911. When the police spoke to George, he blamed the fleeing of his hotel on being chased by ghosts. (laughs) Then later, he blamed his bad decision on ecstasy. A representative from ecstasy commented, yeah, nice try bath salts. A California man by the name of Michael Armas Sr. intervened at a bank as an attempted robbery went down. Eduardo Palencia, age 42, was a former neighbor of Armas's and a friend of his daughter's. After threatening the teller with a note saying he had explosives, he was demanding money from the teller. Armas intervened, walked him out, and ended the interaction with a hug. Moments later, Armas himself was approved for a $50,000 homeowner's loan with a variable interest rate starting at 26.8%. But unfortunately for Armas, none of the bank's friends were around to witness this robbery. (laughs) After losing his job, an Asiana Airlines passenger opened a door as the plane was landing. All the passengers survived, but some fainted, suffered breathing problems, and others went to the hospital. When contacting ground control, the cockpit was met with a simple, Spirit, is that you? (laughs) For Wild Nights Update, I'm Rocky Powell. Stay the good kind of wild America.
Duh. Rocket. Welcome to the Rocky Rundown, where you get to learn a little bit about my week. Party God Squad, hello. Did you have a good week? I sure hope so. My week was non-stop party rock surprise after surprise. I may have gone to a certain SNL cast member's birthday, and that, my friends, is what my Patreon is for. Unrelated, I went to a speakeasy last week, and I think that a speakeasy is my exact vibe. That's the life for me. There was so much smoke and music in this bar, I thought I was at Cirque du Soleil. I don't know too much about Bugsy Siegel, but while I was making smoke circles and listening to the DJ, I thought, damn, I think this is how Bugsy Siegel felt. I'm horny for those streets, baby, and now that it's warm, gee willikers. That's where I'll be. Smoke circles and all. I went to karaoke on Thursday night and I had to educate someone on who Tina Turner was. That's right, I'm just as shocked as you are. Just one day prior, we had lost the music legend and no one, I mean no one, was singing any Tina Turner. So your girl got up to sing Proud Mary, but instead of doing Tina's normal monologue opening in the beginning, I simply said, There is no Beyonce, there is no Lady Gaga, there is no Madonna, no Whitney, no Britney, no Mariah, without Tina. To hear a girl in the background say, who is she talking about, really pissed me off. To which I replied, on the mic, I'm talking about the legend herself, the iconic Tina Turner. Everyone in the bar clapped. I have the mic now, and this is how we do Proud Mary. A karaoke bar is a sham to me unless they let you sit on the bar and sing. And this karaoke bar that I was at lets you sit right up on that bitch like it's coyote ugly without any of the ugly coyotes and without any of the choreography. I was with Isabel and we were absolutely vibing and singing our hearts out. And sometimes when you act how we were acting at the bar, free, uninhibited, and feeling all the music in the depths of our soul, people will want to be around you. People are yearning to be on your channel. So people will come up to us, and some just want to hang, and some are grown men who drape their arms around you under the guise of wanting to make you a part of their song. It's more culturally appropriate to do this while they're singing rather than just grab us, you know? Some people add nothing, some people are sweet new friends, and some will come right in off the street, and next thing you know, you're looking at pictures of his kid while he tells you how him and his ex are nailing co-parenting when you'd rather be doing shots with the bartender and belting Savage Garden. But it can be dangerous to be mean to men in the wild. Other people's energies are always trying to come up in here. And that's my cross to bear. On Saturday, I saw my friends in the musical Something Rotten. It was out in Port Jefferson, and I have to give them a shout out because not only was the show amazing, it was ranked the number one show to see on Long Island currently, and they were two of the leads. So shout out to you, Dennis and Andrew. It was the most fun. If you don't have talented friends, go find yourself some talented friends because they make life so much shinier. So congrats to them. And while we're on the subject of making the world shinier, I must give a huge shout out to my cousin Katie who turns 30 this week. I was right there waiting at the hospital for her to be born. She was right there when I celebrated my 30th birthday and I will always, always be right there for her. So happy birthday to my motherfucking girl. That brings us to Rocky's Highest Thoughts, my most stone thoughts of the week, number one. In New York City, we have trains. And on our trains, there's a little thing called showtime, where guys dance and swing around poles without any regard for human life. Not everyone is a fan of showtime, mainly because it's loud, physically dangerous, and usually only during the most crowded times of the day. I happen to love showtime. I'm constantly impressed by them, and I love when they make people smile with a fist bump. It's rare, but it happens. I'm a sucker for showtime. A solo showtimer gets on the train, and he was very much a grown adult man. And he was looking real good. And all the women across from me gave him money. Shit, I gave him a dollar. (laughs) There's nothing prolific here, but I was just thinking about it, and I just want you to appreciate your local showtimers, will ya? Number two, while lying on the couch the other day with nothing to throw together for a meal, I realized why people were only living to like 22 when they had to forage for every single meal. Sometimes the cooking three meals a day is too much. I might have thrown in the towel too back then if I had to go outside every time I wanted a fucking berry. Number three, 
I was meditating and picturing driving down Route 66 towards Las Vegas with the top down, wind in my hair and not a care in the world. Then I started to think, what if I had a little sexy time in the back seat, pulled over on Route 66 at dusk? Would there be mosquitoes? Would other cars drive by while we were pulled over? Or would it just be us for miles? Would the buzzards watch from a distance? Would they like what they saw? Then the song Get Your Kicks on Route 66 entered my brain, and I thought, oh my god, somebody else already thought of banging on Route 66, and then they capitalized off of it. But is there anyone out there who's actually done it? Number four, greetings are hard. Being human is hard. But if you met someone one time three years ago, especially in adulthood, and they say nice to meet you, just say you too. Unless you're willing to say the exact time and place in that moment. I've been on both sides, and it's just easier to say you too. You know why? Because none of it matters. We have so much life to live. And sometimes we simply can't remember one day. My guest this week is comedian Peru Flores. Peru's wild word was transformative. So get ready for a whole new you after this amazing story. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. You can follow me at Wild Nights with Rocky on TikTok and Instagram, at Wild Nights Pod on Twitter. If you want to watch extended interviews with all of my guests, please follow me on YouTube. You can support the show for 2 or $5 a month by joining my Patreon. A big thank you and a future thank you to everyone who's written and everyone who will write a review when this episode is over. It really does make a difference. Peru, welcome. Thank you for doing the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have you. We chatted a little bit before we hopped on, but I told you um, I learned about you through my brother and his girlfriend, Kaylee, and they they just rave about your show, Unpopular Opinions. But my major question for you, have you ever met another Peru organically? No, I've never met another Peru on organic court. I've never met another <laughs> Peru at all, which honestly feels really special. That feels special, right? <laughs> yeah. That's I feel cool. like there's a lot of, I've met like a lot of Americas. Uh-huh. A ton of Americas. Uh, I've had, no, no, but no, no Perus. No Perus. Not no. yet. Not yet. Knock not on wood. Yet. Knock on wood. Would you like to meet another Peru? No, I like to be the only Peru in the world. It'll be great to know, be known as the only Peru. Well, I guess it's the country Peru and then the person Peru, the only two. That's yeah, I was going to say, I got bad news for you. There's this little country. It's called. <laughs> they took it from me. They took it from we me know. and they paid me. They paid me royalties. <laughs> <laughs> well, you deserve it, baby. You deserve those royalties. My name, okay. like, so my original, my, my my original name, I guess, well, I guess, yeah, my original name, my birth name is Raquel, which throughout my whole life, you would think people never saw a fucking Q in their life. So many people call me Rachel, but, <laughs> <laughs> but then when I started to go into college, my family always called me Rocky. And then when I went into college, none of my friends did. And then when I went to college, my friends started calling me Rocky and I, at first I was kind of like, do I like this? And then I was like, oh, I like this. So I think that was a very transformative moment for me. Ah, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Oh, you really did do it. Okay. Thank oh, who you. Knows? Look at you. Okay. <laughs> so Peru, that. thank you. So Peru's wild word was transformative. So Peru, take us into your wild night story. I'm dying to hear it. Transformative. Okay. Transformative. And Full disclosure, this story ends at night, but it starts in the daytime. So okay. if that's a loophole worth taking. Oh, oh yeah. P I, the show is called Wild Nights and it's great. And I, I let people do the, the night portion, but you know, I've had stories that have gone on for months. Like people have told stories that are a wild story that lasted months in their life. So you, you don't feel limited. You just give me all the juicy deeds. Okay, great. Yeah, this one is transformative in the sense that it really changed my route. Uh, wow. Yeah, but but it's good. Um, I, I thought of a lot of just silly stories that I could tell you, but this one really is transformative. So I was a junior in high school. Okay. And um, I talk about this during my show on Public Opinions, but my background is speech and debate. And I started doing speech and debate when I was in high school. So by the time I was a junior, I was competing pretty heavily. Okay. And I was like super involved. I was like one of like the, the, the hits of the team. Um, but I um, went to high school in West Texas. 
Okay. In Odessa Midland, uh, home of George W. Bush. Mm. Oh, shout out. Not to, to brag. <laughs> not to brag, not to <laughs> boast. Your besties. <laughs> besties, besties. We're going back. Um, and so I, uh, since I don't know if you're familiar with West Texas, but like not to really, go no. into. Okay, so to go into any like city around West Texas, you it's like a commute. So you have to go like an hour out, two hours out. Like gotcha. there's a lot of traveling. You know, there's not that many things that are close to each other. So for debate tournaments, you would have to take the bus, the school bus, and it would take you to like the, the next city over. And it would always be like a, a either 45 minutes to like a three hour ride. Wow. So the catch is that as opposed to other speech and debate teams, our speech and debate team was full of like, imagine like um like a movie, like a cheesy movie where like all the debate teams are like full of like outcasts and like, <laughs> you know, like rough r- roofies, yeah. whatever. The underdogs. And the underdogs. But yeah. like, you know, it's, it's not just really a bunch of nerds. It was honestly just a bunch of like potheads who like were smart, but didn't want to apply themselves to like other classes. Gotcha. Um. And I was kind of like in the peripherals, right? But um, we were kind of known for like bringing alcohol with us on debate trips. Ooh. So we, we were like naughty debaters. We the were not like the, the bad kids. Yeah. And so we had done it a few times. And our coach at the time, our teacher was Miss Sweeney. Miss Bless her heart. She had to deal with all of us. So Miss Sweeney kind of always like kind of knew what was happening, but never really said anything. So this one time we were uh, packing the school bus. We were going to San Angelo, Texas. It was one of like the bigger tournaments in the area. We were going to sleep overnight in San Angelo. Okay, fun. Oh my God. Uh, Well, San Angelo was not fun, but the trip was fun. But the trip, trip. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just staying (laughs) out with everybody, yeah. This guy who was like the ring leader, he was a senior. His name was David Ralph. He was 18, but he looked like he was 27, like okay. most white people in high school do. They look so much <laughs> older. Yeah. And he's like 6'2", looks 27. And he brought like this big jug of Everclear on the bus, which we were supposed to indulge on the way there. I know you, you, you winced already. The, yeah. the story is going downhill from here. Everclear. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's like good cooking utensil. Yeah, alcohol, yeah. Basically. So... We were uh, a group of like 12 going, including this one girl named Samantha, who was just a fill-in. We needed like a a minority number of people to go on this trip. So we just recruited this girl from like a speech class to come on the trip with us. Gotcha. So we're heading to San Angelo. We're starting to like partake with the Everclear in the back of the school bus. We're like pouring it into like our Gatorade bottles. And then Samantha, who's not part of the crew, decides to just be like hey like are y'all like drinking and we're like yeah I guess whatever so she's like gonna have some so we're all having fun we're like okay sure you can have some we're like halfway through the trip and then we realized that Samantha like was taking a nap and then we're like okay cool so we're just like kiki we're like in the back getting a little yeah. tipsy you know we didn't have to compete that day or it was just check-in and then that's the next what I was gonna competition. Ask. yes that's what yeah. I figured yeah yeah so then we were like okay whatever We're like two thirds of the way in the trip. And then we realized that Samantha is getting a little sick. We find this out because this other girl saw that while Samantha was taking a nap in the back of the school bus on her pillow, she had started to vomit all over herself. And so all of us are like, oh no, Samantha's like throwing up. We need to stop. So picture like a West Texas highway. It's like empty. Not many mm-hmm. things around. This huge ass yellow school bus pulling over the gotcha. side of the road. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, you know, right, Samantha, poor her. You know, she has to go take care of her herself. And then suddenly it was like, I'm telling you, Rocky, it was like a domino effect. Then this guy named Diego started throwing up. This girl named Alex started throwing like people started like throwing up like dominoes and were like, what is happening? Right. And like, then everyone's starting to puke outside of the school bus, <laughs> which is funny. And then a state trooper happened to just be driving by. So then this like state trooper like parks in front of the school bus, which is kind of sus, right? There's like this yellow school bus just parked in the middle of the highway. Yeah. So the state trooper comes out and he's just checking in. He's like, hey, is everything okay? Do you all need help? 
And then all of us are like, yeah, 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 yeah we're fine. Like, they're, they're just sick. You know, they're just road sick. We're good. And then me, Sweeney's like, yeah, I think they're just getting sick from the, from the trip. And then this guy named Diego, who was never part of the crew, always had something against us, just goes, no, they're not road sick. It's from all the alcohol. We all looked at Diego and were like, oh, my God, you just fucked it up for all of us. Next thing you know, Rocky, it was like a movie. Samantha couldn't stop throwing up. She had alcohol poisoning. Oh the ambulance God. had to get called. Two more straight chase troopers came. A fucking fire truck came because everyone was throwing up in the school bus so much that the fire truck had to come in. It was like the news department came. It became this huge thing. Oh my God. We A lot of us like were underage, we're like 17, uh, but then a lot of the kids were 18 too. So like the state trooper didn't know how to go about it. Like whose possession were we under? Like could people get arrested? And at one point there were so many uh, police cars there and we we're all getting breathalyzed. And at this point I went from like being like a cool kid to be like, no, please. <laughs> I did and then I remember when like the state trooper was like breathalyzing me. I was like, I was just I just thought it was Gatorade, sir. I had no idea there was <laughs> any alcohol in it. We had to take the school bus into a warehouse so the fire truck could hose it down. It was it was this whole scenario. And mind you, we're all kind of drunk at this point too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some somebody blew like 1.8. Like it was insane. Like the only reason we didn't get arrested. Uh, was one because a few of us were underage okay and the 18 year old including David who was the ringleader yeah couldn't get arrested because we were technically under school property gotcha so he couldn't just get arrested let's just say that we didn't make it to the competition but we still had to we still had to drive into San Angelo they had to call Samantha's mom to drive to San Angelo because she had to go get her stomach pumped at the hospital. Oh my God. This is so wild. Yeah. And it all went from just being like, we do this sometimes we get tipsy to like literally being on the news. It was such breaking news for that night. Cause you know, like the, the nightly news, the local news happening yeah. at 10 PM. Yeah. We had to drive back in the school bus with everyone without Samantha, who had to, you know, stay yeah. in the hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we drove back in the school bus, and it was around, like, 9 p.m. at this time. Uh -huh. They had to drop us off on school property, and at this point, they're like, call your parents. So I call my mom, and I'm like, something happened, we're back, and I'm crying, sobbing, and my mom and all of everyone's parents have had to have an emergency meeting with the principal who had been called from the school. Jesus. It was it was this whole ordeal, Rocky. And then um my mom and my sister showed up who are my mom is an immigrant. So at uh -huh. this point she really thought like something happened to my kid. Meanwhile yeah, she yeah. had no idea I had partaken. <laughs> Uh, we are in this classroom with the principal. The news outlets are all outside. People are trying to interview us from what yeah. happened. And the principal's like you all should be ashamed of yourselves. You cannot believe what a disgrace is on the school. And then my mom and my sister turned to me and they're like, wait, you're a part of this? And I was like, I'm sorry. Man. I thought it was Gatorade. <laughs> I thought it was Gatorade. Um, but anyway, so the reason why it's a wild night, because like that night dragged on forever. Yeah, like, of course. It, it just ended up being this whole thing. Rocky, uh, to really sum it up. Yeah. Like, this transformed my life because uh, David Routh had to go. To, we all had to go to juvie. I went to juvie. Are you serious? I went to juvie for 18 days. Um, there's Wait, a thing in. What? Stop right there. You went to <laughs> juvie? What happened in juvie? Okay. So there's two in, in this particular city in West Texas. There's a thing called teen court, okay. which is wild <laughs> if you think about it. Yes. So you're able to choose as an underage person who committed an offense on school property if you yeah. want to get tried um, on regular court or teen court. Yeah. Um, so I chose to get tried on teen court because I was underage and I had the, the capability of doing so. Yeah. And so I was given a sentence of suspension from school for five days. And then I had to do three weeks, which ended up being 18 days of juvie. Now, juvie 
has two buildings. One for like the not so bad kids who have to go to juvie from like nine to five, like a regular school day. Okay. And then the other side of the fence for the other juvie kids, you know, like may have stabbed someone right, on right. school property. May or may have not. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not pointing fingers. <laughs> We're not pointing fingers. No. Um, but I went to juvie for 18 days on the like less thank god bad. Yeah. like people who smoke weed people yeah. who like stole who ran from the cops or something yes i remember there was this one kid in juvie who like claimed he had a rocket launcher like it was a, it, it was a it was a, a group of characters in yeah. juvie uh but the plus side to juvie is that they the school sends you all of your materials for all of the 18 days okay so all of my t- i like how making it sound like it was a vacation i was yeah, like, you're like- a vacation <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> we got all of our materials so like all of my tests homework like I had all of my materials there yeah. already so like you were on the ball I was like oh I got all my tests going everything yeah now I did get kicked out of a lot of the school plays that was at the time there was a reputation to be you know like regained from that yeah but this this is what led me back on the path of speech and debate because okay. that teen court guess what the people who are in charge of representing you or like uh, fighting against you, they're not lawyers. They're teen lawyers. (gasps) So they're teenagers? So there's one official lawyer who represents the county who assists the teenagers, the teen lawyers. Oh my God. I, I went from being someone who was like sentenced on teen court to be a teen lawyer All my right. senior year of high school oh my god the comeback like, kid the comeback kid I was the redemption story I even got a scholarship from being a, a teen lawyer in 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 senior year of high school because they were like you exemplify like what it means to be able to redeem yourself meanwhile I was still drinking on the day trip yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> um But anyway, so the reason why it was transformative is because this trip really made me want to like, like fight and like prove myself even from a bad experience. So a few months after the juvie situation, I made it on stage, was a runner up on the state competition for the entire state of Texas, went to nationals for the first time in Las Vegas to then go to nationals again the next year and like be one of the finalists, which is a huge deal out of like thousands of kids. So, um, I will never forget that night. I will never forget that. (laughs) That was incredible. What an incredible experience. I know probably in the moment, as you were saying, it was traumatizing, but then to be like, no, I'm going to fight and come out the other side and you're all going to wish you were on my debate team. Like what the fuck? Mm -hmm. That was crazy crazy was your your mom and your sister were probably beyond proud well I mean not then not then but like (laughs) after watching you excel afterwards yeah for sure and I mean like I feel like as an immigrant like I was I was a terrible kid when I was in Peru Uh uh, because I'm from Peru (laughs) and (laughs) and when I came to the U.S. like part of the acclimating process and time like I became like really applied in my school Uh so my mom like up until that point just thought I was doing well in school and like didn't have any issues with me this was a turning point into yes. me being a little bit more rebellious yes but um I, I mostly learned my lesson I had another incident during yeah. nationals the following summer but that's a different story gotcha that's for the next oh. time you come on the pod <laughs> yeah I'll tell you next time the good um, part two. Oh my god that's amazing I I will wait with bated breath Peru that was absolutely <laughs> wild thank you so much for sharing that and what a what a time I see how it was transformative, but I also see how um, it just, well, I guess this is transformative to change, to have this like pivotal change, but this accelerated you into now you're this incredible debater where you've able to not only make a comedy show, a successful comedy show that's been mentioned in the New York times, that's mm-hmm. been mentioned in time now, New York. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know what Thank I mean? You. And it's all because of your skill with debate. Yeah, and I mean, hey, leave it to me to thrive at team court in Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. How long has Unpopular Opinions been running? 
Uh, running since uh, last year, last May. So we actually just this past Saturday, I'm not sure when this is coming out, but May Monday. 20th. Uh, was our one year anniversary. So that's it's really amazing. exciting. Congratulations to you. Congratulations Thank to you. That's you. amazing. Do you have a favorite subject? So just so everyone listening knows, um, if they ever have the pleasure to go see it live, what what exactly is the structure of the show? It's two people debating, but just give us a little detail on what the structure of the show is. Yeah. So super quickly, it's called Unpopular Opinions with me, Peril. Uh, I produce it, host it, do everything. It's a comedy uh, debate show mm -hmm. uh, based on the structure of like a specific debate, which is called LD debate, Lincoln mm -hmm. Douglas debate. Okay. So what I do is, is I bring a couple of unpopular opinions based on a theme. So it could be parties and gatherings or relationships and whatnot. Uh -huh. And then the guest comedians have no idea what the opinions are, but they are tasked with debating me on my opinion. So then we each, like in a real debate, get to pitch to the audience for 60 seconds. And then we get to do a cross-examination, like okay. Mike Pence, Kamala Harris style. Yeah. Uh, and then at the very end, for each round, the audience gets to vote on which opinion, um, which side they agree on. So it's Amazing. very, very like um, immersive and yeah. really like, it's just a fun, a chaotic time just debating the stupidest thing. So even if your guest doesn't agree with the topic they're given to debate they have to figure out ways to side with it exactly yeah Amazing. so for example like one time like the debate um an unpopular opinion from the audience actually was it's okay to bring a fuck boy over on a girl strip like on a girl strip mm -hmm. and i had to debate for it and the comedian had to debate against it even though they were for it yeah. so like it's very it's very debate you know like you have to like, argue something that you actually could be in agreement with or right. not Yes. Um, yeah. 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 It's very fun. That's amazing. Um, do you have you ever had a, a favorite subject just that came up organically in the past year where you're like, oh, my God, that was my favorite thing that I got to debate. But I, I didn't even know it would be my favorite. Uh, oh, wow. There's been a lot of interesting ones. But let me yeah. tell you, actually, one thing about the show is Please. that uh, at the end of the show, we choose unpopular opinions from the audience that are anonymously submitted. Okay. So I always tell audiences, like, write the most chaotic, unpopular opinion you have because it's anonymous. And the most shocking topics, I guess, to kind of tie it to your question is some of the audience members are really chaotic. Like one audience member anonymously wrote, any country outside of the U.S. is a third world country, which is like low key, pretty like problematic and Huge. borderline racist. Right. But the beauty of the show, in a way, is that it's kind of like a safe space to truly be as unhinged as and possible. And outlandish, yes. And outlandish. And, like, we with the comedians will, like, roast you on it. We'll call you out for being trash. Yeah. Uh, we've had, like, Trump supporters in the audience. Like, we, we have everything. But then, like, at the end of the night, like, we're all there together. And we're mm -hmm. just going to have fun. And, like, right. my job is not to, like, really like call you out it's just to like roast you and have fun and just move on yeah so it's it's really fun in that way that we can just we're able to like get over those things that maybe yeah. in a regular conversation could be kind of cringe yes uh, and problematic um, yeah yeah we we embrace the cringe and and then just make fun of it let me ask you this who is your dream person to debate with you know what? I, I will tell you a dream person I would love to debate would be Kathy Griffin because I wow. feel like she is the epitome of someone who's polarizing. Yes. Uh, I mean, post photo. Of course. Um, but someone who I admire so much because yeah. she never backed down. She always speaks her mind. Mm -hmm. She's kind of like a Joan Rivers type in yes. which they just say whatever they want no censor and they yeah. just stand their ground and I think their um, trailblazers and Kathy Griffin would love to debate her anytime I'm listening Kathy would Kathy. Kathy she's reposted a couple of my things but you know we'll see well I want to get her on the show we'll get her there Peru we will get her we'll there get her. and um right now is there anything in the meantime that you would like to promote besides your social media? Please promote your social media. But is there anything else you have coming up? Uh, this episode will be out this Monday, Memorial Day. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Cute, cute. Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial. Rem- don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. <laughs> remember. Um, yes, my show on Popular Opinions uh, is every third Saturday of every month. So the okay. next show is going to be June 17th. Love it. Which is uh, our Pride edition. So if you want to support an LGBTQ show, come to that one. Amazing. Uh, I'm actually about to, by the time this comes on a Monday, I would have already announced... I have a new show coming out with a dear friend called Nick Rosenthal. So you're getting the scoop right now, actually. Yes, thank you so much for uh, sharing the scoop. Yes, he is known as at Clown Face Binge on TikTok, really okay. massive following. So him and I are doing a show called Pioneers and Trailblazers. It's inspired by the Oregon Trail game show. So we're doing a game show of the time. Uh, so that debuts at Brooklyn Art House this coming June 14th, Amazing. Wednesday. It's a new venue in Williamsburg. It's going to be fabulous. Check out all the information for tickets, my show, any other content at Hey Peru on Instagram and TikTok. That's Hey Peru, like you're saying, Hey Peru. Yes, uh, the one and only. For all my other stuff, Yeah. Peru, I, uh, my cheeks hurt, which is an amazing sign (laughs) of a great episode because I just, uh, that was, you took me on a a bus ride. You took me on a bus ride. (laughs) I took you on a bus ride full of puke. Full Full of of puke. puke. Uh, Been there. (laughs) Peru, thank you so, so much for doing the show. Thanks for sharing your time. Thanks for sharing your story. And everybody, please check out Peru's shows if you're in the city because uh, I think you'll be missing out if you don't. Yeah. And people probably have some undercover, hidden, unpopular opinions that they want to anonymously write in. Anyway, this is your chance. Everyone has some of Everyone. Let me tell you. Everyone. (laughs) What do they say? They're like assholes. Everybody's got one. Everybody's got one. (laughs) Peru, thank you so, so much for doing the show. And you and I will talk soon, okay? Yes. Thanks for having me. Take care. Absolutely. Bye.